Shelly Crow, thank you so much for being on the interview today. I'm really pleased and honored to be chatting with you. Uh, you and I have a, a great long history and it's so great to highlight you and your work today. And I'm excited to share what you do um, with all of my listeners, with my audience, with your audience, and to get you out there a little bit more. I wanted to start by introducing you just a little bit and we'll let you do a better job of that too, of course, because you know your work best. But um, you've been through quite a few of my own courses. You've been through the Astrology Certification Program, the Tarot Certification Program, the Upward Facing Business Academy. I might be missing a couple. But that coupled with your degree in higher education, your passion for yoga, um, you've created a really exciting and unique niche uh, for your business, which is to, as I understand it, bring the feminine forward more prominently within astrology. So you do a lot of work with astrology. That's such a relevant conversation for us to have in 2020 and beyond. It's definitely a conversation that's happening in the wider cultural um, milieu at the moment. And I want you and I to have that discussion as part of the modern mystics community um, and I also want to share with people, you know, how well you're doing with this and how speaking out about this, um, this really important topic is not just serving you as a business person, but serving the clients that you work with. So we've, we've got a lot to cover today, Shelly, and I'm really excited that you're here. So thank you. Well, thank you, Alana. I'm really happy and excited to be here and um, looking forward to sharing more about this conversation around um, gender and astrology and mystical yeah. practices. So, um, yeah, so thank yeah. you for having me. So did I get the overview of what you do correct? Is there anything you want to add to that? Is there anything that I missed? Any nuances that I didn't quite get right? No, that was um, pretty spot on. When okay, I good. work with clients, um, I try to work with them from, um, to have them maybe tell me a little bit of a story about their lives so that I can sure. work with them better from where they're at when we take a look at their charts, allowing their lived experiences to inform how we, how we navigate those birth charts. Yeah, that's awesome. Because one of the things that I definitely, um, that I teach my students, but that I also believe in as, as part of it, astrology is not fortune telling. It's not us sitting here telling, you know, the client, here's what's going to happen. Here's, here's who you are. It is a conversation. Astrology is psychology. So we have to have a discussion with our client, with our students, uh, to see how they're expressing their chart, to see what's true and powerful for them, to see where they're at so we know what to work with. So what do you see coming up with, and you work with primarily women, is that correct? That is correct. I um, work primarily with women. Um, I also have uh, several clients who are um, non-binary. Awesome. So yeah, um, so that, tends to be where, where I float. So nurturing the feminine is where you tend to focus. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Awesome. And bringing that out in a really um, empowered way. Uh, yeah. So, and, and also allowing the client to tell me a little bit about what does the feminine mean to them? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, what's interesting is um, I actually had a discussion with a fellow astrologer the other day, and we were talking about how classically, uh, and this is true, I believe, for both Western and Eastern astrology, but, you know, I practice more Western. I am a Westerner. Mm -hmm. So I know for certain it's true for Western astrology that classically there's quite an imbalance and there's, there's, there's a heavy focus on masculine archetypes. And one of the things that she and I were discussing, and she also has a degree in, in psychology, uh, and we were saying that the feminine as we know it, as we know it right now, is defined, ha has been and is defined by men defined by the masculine. We only know the feminine as it has been defined for us by the patriarchy, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we live in a really interesting time right now where we have, we have the freedom and opportunity to explore that, to rewrite uh, what those, to rewrite that belief system. To, to redefine what feminine is based on what the feminine says it is. Because the feminine, you know, based on masculine definitions, the feminine is just receptive, it's calm, 
it's nurturing, it's cooling, you know, but I don't know if you've known any feminine ladies who are badasses. <laughs> Maybe just a few. But I certainly have. And, you know, the feminine can also be incredibly fierce. It can be incredibly challenging. Um, you know, it wields a lot of power. It will wield it in a different way than the masculine. But I want us to talk about that a little bit and explore um, as a part of this interview because you are actually so educated, right? You, you, not only do you have all of these mystical uh, certifications and mystical practices under your belt and you use primarily through the lens of astrology, but you also have a higher degree in, a, in, uh, in women and gender studies, right? That's correct. That, um, I do. Um, and, and yes, I, 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 I couldn't agree more when we think about um, even the archetypes in astrology, yeah. basically we're offered two options. We can be, um, we can be Venus or we can be the moon or maybe a combination <laughs> of both, but there we are then. Yeah. And that's actually, you know, that I, I can see that changing, um, that conversation changing, but how is that all that much different than the idea that many of us in the West have grown up with, with, well, we can either be the Virgin Mary or the Mary Magdalene and very sanitized versions of the feminine or not, you know? So it's, you know, but they're, right. they're still very limiting. And as you say, yes. they, um, she has, she, they have been defined in term, um, from a privileged masculine patriarchal perspective. Right. So for, for our listeners, Shelley, who maybe aren't as familiar with the astrological archetypes, right, as we are, can you give an overview you know, what, what are our feminine options, right? You said Venus and the moon and planetarily speaking, those are the feminine. We've got Mercury who's an androgyne, right? So there's, there's non-binary there. Um, but what do those archetypes look like? What are they classically defined as? Well, the moon, of course, is the mother archetype. So we have that very um, nurturing aspect of our of our solar system of ourselves uh through through the moon um and venus is the uh is the lover she's the great beauty um but those are pretty limited roles right there <laughs> so we can be um, we can be a mom or we can be a partner and once again we're defined by our roles in terms of how it relates to the masculine <laughs> exactly and <laughs> i'll just um, raise my hand and say that's not quite how i roll <laughs> you know we are we are much bigger than that we have more options than just those two right Exactly. And even when we choose to participate in motherhood or to have a partner, that's not who we are. That's not all that we're capable of, to be yeah. sure. And so really um, having a conversation about, okay, well, what, what does, well, first of all, with the client, what 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 do those archetypes mean to them right. but also take a look at the other astrological um archetypes that are represented by traditionally um male figures jupiter and saturn how do, how does that play out in our lives how do these things um come together and uh and and how does our personality express itself through these archetypes? So where do you find more room for the feminine inside of astrology? Where do you allow your client, yourself to express um, more femininity, different versions of the feminine, give them license, let's say, to go beyond just that classical definition of, uh, you know, mother or partner? Well, one question I think that, as a, um, astrologers that we can ask ourselves is what if we, what if we start by just removing gender mm -hmm. from the archetypes themselves? Uh -huh. What would that look like? What if we assumed that, um, that these archetypes are present in every human being and they play out according to their lived experience simply because a female client comes 
to me or a female identifying client comes to me, um, perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, her uh, Sagittarius or Jupiter is very prominent in her chart. And she is um, maybe tuned into um, particular qualities um, such as uh, a, a, a need to grow, to, to share, to expand, to, to be out there, to be seen. But because she has been raised female, because she identifies as female, and because of the cultural climate that we live in, being a, a basically a patriarchal society, she more than likely has experienced being shut down for sure. those same qualities that are part of who she is, a very significant part of who she is. And so um, allowing her to look at those and, um, or, or, assisting, facilitating the process of looking at those archetypes and letting them come out in a really healthy way that, um, that fits where, where she's at and how she wants to define It's like you're giving her permission herself. to be herself. And sometimes we, we need, sometimes we need that. And sometimes yeah. that's really, um, that sometimes that's all we need to really blossom is just totally somebody to suggest that, you know, maybe there's a different way of doing things. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are a lot of people that I've worked with that that has never been really a possibility. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, I see this a lot with, um, clients that are, have Jupiter, Saturn and the sun yeah. very prominent in their chart. Absolutely. Um, it's that, um, yeah, but I shouldn't feel that way. I shouldn't think, I shouldn't think that way. Um, I, I innately feel like I'm called towards this. I want to express, I want to go, you know, Saturn is um, very heavy in your chart and that's associated with the father. And then you um, want to express that in a particular way, but there might be some resistance to that coming from mm -hmm. culture or coming from upbringing, or it might express in an unhealthy way, like let's uh, be daddy's girl and go out and make things happen in a really masculine sort of way that isn't in alignment with the feminine business owner that I identify myself as. Absolutely. So this really plays out in some really interesting ways. Um, but breaking out of those little boxes, recognizing that our incarnation, you know, our race, our class, our gender, um, how we sexually identify our sexual orientation, all of these things that are part of who we are, that goes along when we look at these birth charts. Mm -hmm. We don't leave them at the door. I think there's a tendency totally. to, well, all's one. So therefore, let's put our blinders on when it comes to those things. And it's like, yes, all is one, but. But you're a unique and special snowflake and you're exactly. an individual. <laughs> it's not either or. The way or. that you express it's... that is pretty, pretty unique. Yeah. That's so yeah. interesting. I am. Um, oh, I was just, I just had a question on the tip of my mind and I wanted to bring it up. Um, we're, I mean, you're, you're healing the feminine with this work, you know, and, and one of the things that one of the opportunities that we have right now, and it's it's very unique this time that we live in, it's very unique this time that we live in, is we have this opportunity to heal the feminine. We have this opportunity to redefine what the feminine is and what it should be. And, you know, I want to do a real quick point of fact, kind of clarification for listeners. There There is a difference between female, which is a gender, and feminine, which is a cosmic energy, right? All of us, ha all of us regardless of gender, have feminine within us. We all do. Some of us identify more strongly with the feminine. Some of us identify as primarily feminine, and that really doesn't have anything to do with the outer shell of the body. So when we talk about healing the feminine, which has been severely repressed for several thousands of years because of patriarchal society and culture, um, it's a big job. And we don't necessarily have clear 
pathways or guidelines on how to do it because we've been so culturally entrenched with this one way of thinking of the feminine for so long redefining it in our own way is going to take some work it's going to take some inquiry and it's going to take some i think broadening our scope of the types of mythology and archetypes that we look at so one of the things i was thinking of is you know when we're talking about archetypes in western astrology that we identify as primarily masculine archetypes like the sun like mars right mars is a very masculine archetype mm -hmm. being the god of war there's also a goddess of war you know artemis or diana or Pallas athena like these are all warrior goddesses in the greek and roman traditions that exist or if we go to the east we have Durga, our great goddess of war. Like there have absolutely been feminine archetypes that embody that type of energy in a feminine way, you know, and in terms of like the fathering, like getting stuff done, uh, Parvati is great for that. Shiva's consort. Um, and even that word consort, like that's a whole other podcast to unpack, right? But, um, <laughs> you know, we have Juno in the Greek tradition, who is, you know, the keeper of the home and like the organizing principle. There are still ways, there are still things and archetypal truths that we can look at that that have been expressed as feminine for all this time that are maybe slightly less well known that still hold truth that still have power and for lack of right now actual human beings who have done this work before us because we're really probably the first to be doing this type of work true you know we're really on the leading edge of redefining what femininity is what it looks like what it means to be a primarily feminine being so it's not like we have uh, a whole bunch of ancestral paths to look at. There might be a few, but there aren't a ton. And maybe the few that we have don't exactly match the direction we want to go. So we have to think a little bit bigger and broaden our archetypal references. Absolutely. And taking a look at, for example, you mentioned um, Diana. Well, Diana, she was a, she was a warrior goddess, but she yeah. was a moon goddess too. Hey. So within our, 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 <laughs> uh, Pallas Athena, yeah, she was, uh, you know, she was a fierce warrior, but she's still a Athena, uh, uh, Athena, uh -huh. i.e. Um, so we can work with these. Um, th we don't have to look too far. No. Really. To, but we have to look. Um, but we do have to do some searching because some of these voices, for example, um, Mercury, um, that, that Mercury is not, um, binary, um, is kind of a little known fact and, um, taking a look at these things because, and, and perhaps because they have been repressed or because their stories just haven't been told, mm -hmm. taking a look at why have their stories been left out? And going a little deeper, um, throughout mythology, there are all sorts of um, characters that we see come up that are non-binary, that mm -hmm. are um, empowered female um, uh, char characters and archetypes that are male identifying, but are a little bit more gender fluid. Yeah, um, or compassionate or nurturing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so recognizing that some of these stories just they're, that they're there, but they mm -hmm. have been shut down, and so just letting them come up or seeking them out so that they can come up, and that means checking in with our own stuff, our own privilege Absolutely. as well. That has to come too. Is recognizing where we as astrologers, what are, where have we been privileged and where have we been shut down? Sure. Really working with that, owning that so that when we approach a client, that it can be from a really open place where, okay, now tell me about your lived experience. We've got to do our own shadow work. Yes. Oh, yes. Especially if we're going to help <laughs> other people do theirs, then we yes. best 
Absolutely. That's, that's mm -hmm. the Chiron principle, which I learned just the other day that, do you know, so Chiron uh, is an asteroid in the sky that we use as astrologers to represent mm -hmm. the, the wounded healer. Or, yeah, the wounded healer. So through our own deep wounding, we eventually rise to become the healer. And that's something that we as modern mystics and spiritual leaders often identify with. However, I learned just the other day, do you know how Chiron, he was uh, a centaur, do you know how he ended up uh, going on his journey from wounding to healing? Tell me. There was a lady who nurtured him through it, and she was also a centaur, and she also represents the wounded healer. And I don't remember her name, so that's our homework. Wow. Yeah. What an amazing story. And like, I'm a mythologist, and I literally just learned that like the other day. Mythology is so incredible. There's layer upon layer upon yeah. layer, and we reinterpret it. Yeah. And look, it, it, it's incredible. And There's if you so look, you will find what you need within mythology always. Okay. So, Shelly, I want to ask you as we kind of wrap up and work to our close here, because I know that you have another appointment pending. Um, for people who are interested in this work, and I, and I deeply hope that many who listen to us are interested in pursuing this further and looking more closely at this and, and bringing more quality into the work of astrology, into our mystical practices, bringing forth the feminine more prominently. And I don't mean in a way that's imbalanced. I mean in a way that's appropriate because both the feminine and masculine are, are, are important. It's just that the masculine has gotten so much airplay for the last several thousand years. Time to give it the feminine its due. Um, you know, what would you assign since we are, you know, an academy in the Modern Mystics Academy, since we are both teachers, what would you assign as like three bits of homework to our listeners? To, to explore and bring forth the feminine or astrology a bit more in their own practice? Well, in order to be empowered through astrology, we have to, we have to do our work. Yeah. And I really love to start people off with the basics. So yes, um, I mean, there's just not much point in talking to a client about the five asteroid goddesses when it, when we haven't looked at things like the moon right. or Venus. So the first thing that I really love to encourage clients to do is to follow the lunar phases, to um, make notes around the lunar phases and yeah. see how the phases affect them personally. Now awesome. I would do this with any client, male, female, non-binary, because there is some suggestion that during the full moon, this is what happens. During the new moon, this is what happens. And waxing and waning moons, this is what happens if you are female. And that's just not everyone's lived experience. Mm -hmm. And then the, then it becomes, well, what's wrong with me sure. that I don't line up with these lunar phases the way that apparently everyone else does? I'm, well, who, who is that, first of all? And um, that, um, and so, so learning how does the moon how, how does that inform and, uh, and affect the client as an individual? What is their actual experience? And if they would like a, a free tool to help, um, to help with that, yeah, just go to my website, ShellyCrow.com. And, um, there, the first thing you'll see is a pop-up. Perfect. That pop -up, yeah. That pop-up will be to a, a, a lunar calendar. Oh, I love that. That's a great calendar. resource, Shelly. Wonderful. Um, yeah. And all, there will be some questions on one side of the calendar for reflection during, um, during the, the moon. So, um, that is that, that just that important. I really mm -hmm. hope everyone, um, who wants to can check that out and incorporate there into their life. I also encourage clients to really get curious about the zodiac. Um, and, you know, once you establish a nice lunar practice, like following the full moon and the new moon, then noticing the sign that the moon is in. Yeah. And does that make a difference for you? How does that affect you? What does it mean that the full moon is in Capricorn? What does that mean? What does that mean for you? What, what do you notice come up as the moon um, moves through uh, 
moves through Capricorn. We have everything through moving through Capricorn right now. <laughs> all of it. Uh, it's all in Capricorn. Yeah. Yep. Just in case you were wondering. It's <laughs> my dog easier. So yeah, it certainly like, does. And Capricorn. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's at this year. Yep. Um, so so yep, it's going to be a hardworking year. But, yes, it is. But, you know, Aquarius is on, is on the other side. And won't that be fun? <laughs> so, yeah, getting curious, getting to know the Zodiac, getting to know how, you, how the, the client, how you interact with these signs. And then finally, know what Alana, what you, you call, uh, you taught us the, the big three. When yeah. I learned my sun sign, moon sign, and my ascendant, my AC, game changer, it was eye opening. Yeah. It was so eye opening. Cause of course I knew my sun sign and I kind of identified with it, but it, it wasn't the whole story. There were other totally. kids and talents in there that I had been repressing. And once I realized my, um, my rising sign and I could see more clearly my moon sign, oh my gosh, it changed my life. It, yeah, it's major. Yeah, it really changed my life and awesome. um, improved my relationships and my career. It, so I really incur, whether you meet with an astrologer like me, or whether you go to astro.com and find out your, your big three, just know that and study it. If you know nothing else about your chart, know your big three. Those are awesome, awesome homework elements. I love that. Follow the moon, get curious about the zodiac, and know your big three. And Shelly, I do hope that everyone listening looks more further, looks further into your work because you are killing it with what you're doing. You are providing such a unique service in such an important niche right now and forever, but right now especially. So for those of you that want to check more out, uh, check Shelly out more, let's see, um, go to ShellyCrow.com and you are S-H-E-L-L-I-E, is that right? That's correct. And S-H-E-L-L-I-E, Crow, C-R-O-W, like the yeah. bird. Yeah. Just like the bird. So ShellyCrow.com, she's got that awesome download for you to help follow the moon sign. And thank you so much for chatting with me today, Shelly. I really appreciated having you. Well, thank you, Alana. I really enjoyed this conversation and being able to talk about things that I love the best. I mean, <laughs> what a better way to spend that Absolutely. afternoon. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot, Shelley. You're very welcome. Thank you.